Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I hope you've had a good week. I know we're winding down. I hope you're staying well. Um, these are crazy times, and um, I hope you and your family and your close friends are um, are doing all right. So tonight we do section 12.4, Measures of Central Tendency. We have this and one more section, and then we have our last, uh, our last test. So you're almost there, so hang in there. Um, you're going to need your calculator uh, for tonight's section, and uh, I'm going to have you do some work uh, on the side. I might have you stop the video, work a problem, then start the video and, and double-check your numbers. You've got to practice a calculator skill tonight with me, okay? All right, so um, last week we talked about measures of central tendency, uh, section 12.3. Do you remember what the four were? They all started with M, mean Median, mode, mid-range. That's right. And they are different ways to measure averages. Um, well, we'll find out tonight that simply knowing the average of a data set is not enough. It's a good start, but it's not enough information. All right? Another measure for a data set is something we call variation. Okay? Okay. And that looks to see how much the data is similar or different. And it's a, it, there's, a, there's ways to measure that, um, which is actually very, very important when you try to make comparisons between data sets. Okay? Um, the three that we're going to look at are range, variance, and standard deviation. You're going to find out that the variance is actually just a step in the process to find standard deviation. Okay, the most widely used measure of variation or measure of variance. Um, the range is not, not widely reported, not widely used. You'll see why in a second, but it is a measure of variation. Okay, the big one is standard deviation. So by the time we're done tonight, I hope you are able to um, recall the steps to calculate standard deviation. You will have to do it. Uh, on the test, and you can jot it down on a 3x5 card and um, just be able to do it. Also, um, we'll talk about more if you've had a statistics class. I'm well aware that the calculator can do all these things for us, but this is not a statistics class, so I need you to be able to show me the steps. Very important that you show your work when we talk about standard deviation. All right? All right. Well, let's, let's get going. Well, let me just ask you a question. Do you think knowing the averages of a data set reveal all of its nuances? If I just simply told you, hey, um, we took a test and the class average was a 75%, does that tell you all you need to know? Does that mean that everybody in the class got a 75%? Well, it could mean that. It could also mean that half the class got a 100 and half the class got a 50, which would average out to 75%. So simply knowing the average is not all there is to know. Here's another example. Did you know that Houston, Texas and Honolulu, Hawaii have the same mean temperature, same average, 75 degrees? Well, does that imply the temperatures for both cities are exactly the same all the time? Well, a little bit of common sense, you'd go, I don't think so. I mean, doesn't Houston have like super, you know, hot summers and even snow in certain parts? And Honolulu, well, that's like paradise, right? Well, you're exactly right. If we take a look at how the temperature range or how it varies, Houston goes all the way down to the 40s and all the way up to 110. You were right. It gets really hot. Um, but Honolulu... Barely gets below 60, if ever, and barely goes above 90. The trade winds help keep it very moderate. So, yeah, you were right. Simply knowing the average does not tell the whole story. Well, here's our first measure of variance, okay? Or a way to find out how the data in a data set, how it varies. Is it close together or is it spread apart? That's really what we're after, okay? The range is a very, simply, it's very simple computation. It's simply the high value minus the low value. That's all it is. All right? Now, careful. Don't get that confused with the mid-range, which was what? 
high plus low divided by 2. Remember, the mid-range was an average. Whenever you have an average, you're always dividing. So just keep that straight. The range is simply the high value minus the low value. Okay? And anytime um, we are working with the extreme values of a data set, we've got to be very careful what kind of uh, conclusions we draw. Same reason why we didn't think the mid-range was probably the best measure of central tendency to use, because it involved both extreme values, the high and the low. All right? So here's an example. In this cute, a set of dogs. Now, again, if you just look at these set of dogs, the first one in blue here being the upper dogs on the bench, you'd go, well, they look pretty close in size and weight. And you'd be right. Look at their weights, 70, 73, 58, and 60. Okay? Well, that's pretty close in, in uh, weight anyways. Look at the second set. You've got poodles and bulldogs and big dogs and small dogs and huskies. And they're all over the place. Look at their weights. 30, 85, 40, 125, 42, 70. Okay, all over the place. So if I asked you which set of dogs ha has more variance in it, you know, the weights vary more. You go, well, it looks like the, the ones on the bench have, they're closer in weight. So that would mean that the the dogs down below on the white sheet have more variance. Well, you're right. Without even knowing much about what variance is, the weights definitely vary more. Look at 125 all the way down to 30. Okay. Well, the range would help you find that right away, right? So let's just review. Let's just find it. We'll review and find the mean, and then we'll find the range for each set of dogs. So how do you find the mean again? The mean is what? The sum, right? The sum of the items, the sum of the data set, divided by how many? Okay. So I hope you got your calculators ready to go here. 70 plus 73 plus 58 plus 60 divided by 4. So the mean weight, oh man, I made a mistake. Okay, let's try that again. I hit a button twice. I did 604, not divided by 4. Make sure you put things in parentheses, right? Anytime you have a group of data, a group of numbers, it's always a good idea to put them in parentheses. So you should be doing um, 70 parentheses. 70 plus 73 plus 58 plus 60, close parentheses, divided by 4. And we get 65.25. 65. .25, 65 0.25 pounds. Okay, that's the average. Now the range is simply the, what is it again? It's the high value minus the low value. Well, what is 73 minus 58? 15. So that just tells you the spread in weight between the heaviest dog and the, and the lightest dog, 15 pounds. Okay, now let's compare that with the other list of dogs. So now we're going to go ahead and calculate its mean, which is, again, 30 plus 85. I hope you're working along with me. Plus 40, plus 125, plus 42, plus 75. Goodness, plus 55. And that's 512 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, divided by 8. So it has a mean of 64. Now it's interesting it's interesting that the, the means are kind of similar. The means are kind of similar. I got 512 divided by 8. So that even though the mean is similar, obviously these two data sets are very different, right? I mean, you saw the pictures. And the range on this one, well, how do you find the range? It's the high minus the low which is 125 minus 30. And what is that? That's 95 pounds. So that is a big difference when you compare these two, okay? 95 is a much bigger range. That tells you that the data differs a lot. There's a lot of variance going on. 
the smaller the, the variance, the closer the data is together. The larger the variance, the more the data is spread out. It's not a good or a bad thing. It's just information that you would want to know as a researcher. Okay? All right. Um, I'm going to start uh, this next part, and then I'm probably going to stop it in a few minutes and then start a second video so that it doesn't go too long and the videos get too large. Okay? So we're going to spend a lot of time tonight talking about standard deviation. Okay? And one step in that process is something called the variance. Uh, not too important that you can report the variance other than the fact that it's in the homework. Um, so that's why I'm mentioning it. But normally the standard deviation is what we're after. Okay? And it is the, since the standard deviation involves every data item, remember the mean, I'm sorry, the range only involved the high and the low, only two. Okay? Well, just like the mid-range only involved those two, we normally like um, a statistical measure that involves all the data. That's why we like the median or the mean. Well, the standard deviation involves every data item. That's why it's much more reliable and reported much more often in the research. Okay? So again, just keep in mind that when we talk about deviation, standard deviation, okay, um, a high value versus a low value, all it means is that there's more variation. A low standard deviation means the data is closer together. And that does have meaning depending on what we're talking about. Okay? All right. Um, so I'm, I'm going to uh, walk you through the steps, and then we'll do one together uh, with the calculator, and you'll help me out. Okay? So step number one is you find the mean. Well, we already know how to do that. Step number two is you subtract the mean from each data set. Okay? And then we square that number. Now, I'm going to show you at some point how to combine these. Okay? We're going to save a lot of work. I'm going to show you how to do this on the calculator, and we're going to combine like three or four steps. So don't worry. It sounds like a lot of work, and it's going to look like a lot of work until I show you on the calculator how to combine like three steps into one, and that'll be huge. And I still need to show you. You need to report to me a specific number, and then I'll know that you know what you're doing. But you've got to show me this one number no matter, no matter what we do, no matter how many steps I save you. Okay? Okay. Step number four. We find the sum of those squares, okay? Now, steps two, three, and four. That's what I'm going to show you how to combine on the calculator, and that will save us a lot of work, and it makes the calculator do all the work. We just have to be careful and report that, that one number. I'm going to call it the magic number, okay? And then we, um, steps five and six are the last two, and we, um, Number five is we divide that sum that we just found, okay? We divide that by n minus 1, okay? Remember I told you that n in statistics is always the number of data values? So that's real easy. That's n, and you're just going to divide it by n minus 1. Again, in a stats class, you would go over y n minus 1, but in this class, just remember, divide by n minus 1, okay? Now, to offset the fact that you squared everything, Back in step three, we take the square root, and that gives us the standard deviation. Okay? All right. So I'm going to stop this video, and then I'm going to start another one, and then I'm going to walk you through how to find the standard deviation. I know. You can't wait. We'll be right back. Talk to you in a minute.